So as she continues, she's got, we've, we've got some additional experiences that indicate the way she's thinking about her relationship to language. So this is this example of when she's attaching words to objects. As soon as I could spell a few words, my teacher gave me slips of cardboard on which we were printed uh, which were printed words on raised letters. I quickly learned that each printed word stood for an object, an act, or quality. I had a frame in which I could arrange the words in little sentences, but before I put sentences in the frame, I used, uh, I used to make them in objects. I found the slips of paper which represented, for example, doll is on bed and placed each name on its object. Then I put my doll on the bed with the words is on bed arranged beside the doll, thus making a sentence out of the words and at the same time carrying out the idea of the sentence with the things themselves. Right? So she's saying that she's the word sentences link to the object sentences. Right? That's, that's kind of the claim she's making here. Right? And she doesn't really say the reason so much, but I'm going to say that the reason is she does this uh, by attaching, so by attaching to objects, words provide handles, or kind of handles, for describing and establishing relationships between objects, right? So, um, you know, she's got this other experience, right, where she says, well, one day Miss Sullivan tells me, I, uh, I pinned the word girl on my pinafore and stood in the wardrobe. On the shelf, I arranged the words is in wardrobe. Nothing delighted me so much as this game. My teacher and I played it for hours of time. Often everything in the room was arranged in object sentences, right? So there's, there's a sense in which she is recognizing that the word sentence is linked to object sentences and that it's the language that changes her relationship to objects. And I think, I'm not sure if that's, I guess that could be the warrant, right? Because, uh, because she's, because there's, there's this alternative warrant that could say, well, no, in fact, she could have that kind of relationship to objects even without language, right? Uh, but she's, the way she's telling the story, it really is the experience of, of, of these words and putting them into sentences that allows her then to set up or imagine these kind of relationships with, uh, between objects as well. That she couldn't imagine these kinds of relationships between objects without uh, first laying them out in words. Right? So that she's really attaching quite a, lo a, a large significance to language that's more than, than just a kind of additional form of communication, but really is something that mediates her relationship to reality at all, that, that, that her relationship to reality has changed because of her experience of human language. Right? So, so that's the first indication that we've got that, that, she, that she's attaching to language a very particular significance in, in her development. Right? And so the question then that, that arises for her, I guess for us as well, is whether then language is something innate in humans or is something taught. And this, this goes to our question of the origin of language, right? Is, is the origin of language something that <coughs> is essentially something that's added to us or is it something that's already kind of given to us as this sort of gift, right? So is it innate as a kind of gift or is it something that, have, that has to be kind of learned or, or taught um, by essentially by other humans, right? And this is this is going to be the question that's going to be occupying Steven Pinker when we get to his book about the origin of language, where he's going to be trying to make this argument that it in fact isn't taught, but it's an innate thing. And here uh, we're kind of getting. I mean, it's it's not totally clear in 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 Keller's account, but she she seems to be she seems to be making the claim that she needs a teacher in order to develop the possibility of language. And so this is one of the examples where she says this, my teacher is so near to me that I scarcely think of myself apart from her. How much of my delight in all beautiful things is innate and how much is due to her influence, I can never tell. So she's kind of, she's got the question, right? You know, is it innate or is it, or is it something taught? I feel that her, her being is inseparable from my own and that the footsteps of my life are in hers. All the best of me belongs to her. So she's, you know, she's kind of using this as a heaven. She can't. She realizes she can't separate her own development in her mind from Anne Sullivan's guidance. And so then she says, "There is not a talent or an inspiration or joy in me that has not been awakened by her loving touch." Right. So then, she that's sort of the claim that she needs this teacher in order to develop the possibility of language. And you know the. 
you know, the implication is these, these pri prior experience of language were not really a kind of human language. So, so we, you know, the in, I think, you know, we, we saw she had these indexical de gestures before, the pushing and the pulling. That's probably true. That's not really a kind of human language. But the, once she's using the gestures as kind of predicates, that is a kind of, it's moving beyond that indexical use we get with animals. And maybe this is a kind of already a kind of uh, form of human language. Obviously, she can't learn words without other people, but perhaps, you know, it's, it's not necessary that she needs a teacher for this. So the warrant, I'm going to say the warrant here is that uh, when she, you know, when she looks at this evidence of her own learning of language not happening until she has contact with a teacher, then her warrant is that, um, that Sullivan's role is that of a teacher rather than of a community of speakers. And so this is the alternative warrant, right? So the alternative warrant is, is going to give us the, uh, the other thesis that, or the other claim that language is in fact innate. And she has an indication of this other warrant. So if this warrant is Sullivan's role is that of a teacher, right? So, you know, she's got this experience of learning language and in fact the way Sullivan is doing it is by teaching her language, right? The other way of, of maybe interpreting what's going on, though, she indicates in this other passage where she talks about visiting for the first time this school for the blind. And she says here, we had, this is her first visit to this school for the blind. She says, we had scarcely arrived at, per at the Perkins Institution for the Blind when I began to make friends with the little blind children. It delighted me inexpressibly to find that they knew the manual alphabet. What joy to talk with other children in my own language until then, I had been like a foreigner speaking through an interpreter in the school where Laura uh, Bridgman was taught I was in my own country, right? So she, she's got this experience in which she suddenly has this interaction with these other blind children that also do the manual alphabet, and she feels like she's in her own country. And this is an indication that maybe she didn't really need a teacher. Maybe she just needed other people that could be a kind of community of speakers with her. And then that, that community of speakers could have then developed language on their own without a kind of teacher that already had language to give it to them. Right? So that maybe Sullivan's role, and this would be sort of this other warrant, would be that of, of replacing that community of speakers. Right? She was the only one. She didn't have any community of speakers that could speak. Uh, a language she had access to, although she was sort of trying to develop with it with her own little gestures, which were sort of moving toward a kind of human language, even though there weren't really, I mean, there was kind of limited scope for her to develop it because she didn't have other speakers with the same constraints she, that she had and, and wouldn't have sort of helped or sort of, you know, w with which she could build this kind of community of speakers, right? So, um, so there's this indication that, you know, maybe the teacher is not necessary. Maybe it's just enough for a bunch of children to grow up together with the same constraints and then they might have developed language on their own. So that's, that's kind of the question. We don't really, we can't tell from this account really, but, uh, but the account is sort of moving in the other direction, but there's this, there's this evidence in this other direction, right? So, so the claim, I mean, she doesn't really lay out a claim here exactly, but I'm going to say the claim is Caleb does not need a teacher to develop language, but rather a community of speakers, right? And so that when you have, you know, it could be that you, when you have this example of her learning language, it's not because of, of somebody teaching her the forms of language, but rather that there's just a kind of opportunity for her to develop language um, in a more consistent way than she had before when she only had um, the other people in the household who had human language and then kind of didn't think to try and develop an alternative form of language uh, that was independent of, of, of the English that they used, right?